Well, let's just start. Yeah. Uh, I titled this presentation Next Generation Graphics because it's catchy, but the fact that this is going to be much, much more boring. We're going to talk about mathematical expressions in XML. Uh, please lock the doors, you can't escape anymore. <laughs> um, did you know that SVG uh, was created in 1998? Yeah, so it's pretty old technology. It's nothing new, next generation thing. So I will present myself. Uh, me llamo David Corbacho. I'm from Malaga. Uh, I moved some months ago to London, but I have been living in, in Finland for seven years. I'm happy to see here some familiar Finn faces. And a disclaimer, I'm not a designer. I'm talking here about SVG code. Um, I, I hope if some of you, who, who here is designer? Or, yeah, like 20, 30%. So I, I hope that you can take uh, something out of this presentation, but mainly it's going to be about code and not so much about designing tools or I can talk closer, now better? Ah, thank you. This is a structure I'm going to follow. First I will start presenting a bit SVG for if someone is not familiar with it. Then the past, the present, and the future. And in the middle a bit of how Drupal and SVG are working together. Well, this is a basic SVG element. You can see that it's just XML uh, <coughs> line element with XML attributes. It moves the, it draws the line from the coordinate zero, zero to 200, 200. Uh, so I think it's, you can say that it's human readable. And it's pretty easy. So I'm going to skip all these SVG basic concepts because I mean, you can read this on internet, it's not anything. And let's go through this very interesting element. Uh, the path element in SVG is the most powerful one. The rest of tax elements I just passed through, they are just shortcuts, but under the hood, everything is a path. So the path element uh, the D attribute basically are commands and coordinates. M uh, means move to, so it moves to 100-100. Uh, then it draws a line, L is for line, to 300-100. Then another line, and Z means that close the path. So it finishes the element. This can be a bit compressed because, I mean, if we are repeating commands after commands, just drop the L. You don't need it because it's repeating again the same command. And another interesting thing is that when the command is uppercase, the coordinates are considered to be absolute. And when it's lowercase, it's relative to the previous point. So this one is uh, equivalent to the other ones. You see the L is lowercase, so then it moves relative to the previous point. The commands are line, move, curve, and there is some basic, some other ones, but pretty much everything is like that. Okay, with these instructions I give you, uh, you should be able to visualize what is this in your head. Come on, it's not that difficult, just imagine. Yeah, it's a basic drup drupli cone. Yeah. I saw this tweet some months ago. I mean, yes, you can hand code SVG. I imagine myself hand coding circle polygons, but that thing that we saw, I don't think that's. But then this guy posted this 
some days later, I thought, oh my god, I cannot believe how amazing is that. Someone writing hand code path element. I mean, I cannot do that. So I suppose that the rest of us who just use SVG editors, you need to use a designing tool because you, uh, this is complex uh, SVG paths. Uh, so probably you are already familiar with these tools. Inkscape is open source, uh, and they aim to support fully SVG, like is their native uh, file format. Uh, they try to support everything except animations. Then Adobe Illustrator, probably you, most of the people use this tool, uh, has great user experience, and Sketch is the new guy. Yeah. But the problem is that you export the SVG from Illustrator and then suddenly it's bloated. It has a lot of metadata, uh, things are not needed, and, and you, it's, it's a pain for, from the point of view of a coder that, hey, you can uh, skip all that crap and just leave the neat SVG code that is needed to, to represent the, the graphic. So I recommend you the first one is an online tool. It has these settings. If you leave the default settings, normally it will reduce the size of the SVG like 35% or 40%. Uh, it's pretty good. And of course, if you uh, use a lot SVG, then at some point you want to automate it. You don't want to do this manually. So the second tool, you have many types of ways to aut automate it depending on your workflow. So why SVG? Why you don't use? Why you would like to use SVG? I think the main reason is that vector graphics are always crisp. Uh, it's not only when you use a phone, or, uh, a smartphone that, high, that has high density screen. It's also when you use a normal screen and you zoom in the browser. Also, the graphics get. Uh, get blurry with GPGs and so I, I know that that's not ice cream. I, I, don't, I don't know who put that label. <laughs> but it's, it's, if you go to that path, you will see that. I, know this, I don't understand it. Well, why is SVG? SVG is scriptable. That means that you can put scripts in your SVG. SVG has a SVG DOM. It's similar to HTML DOM but not totally the same. And that's the part of SVG that makes SVG interactive. You can attach events to SVG elements. You can say when user clicks this, when hovers, etc. You can play with JavaScript. At the same time, SVG DOM can be the bottleneck of your, uh, it can be a performance issue if you draw thousands of SVG elements. And some people prefer, hey, I prefer to use Canvas because uh, it's more performant, but you lose the ability of using something like, uh, you know, like normal events that you're used to do in HTML. SVG can, can be animated. Uh, you can use CSS, JavaScript, or Smile. That is something... Uh, it's like animations in XML. It doesn't sound so fancy, and it's a bit only you can apply to SVG. So some browsers support it, but Internet Explorer not. And Chrome decided some months ago, even they have implemented Smile, they have decided to drop it, deprecate it. Uh, they are aiming to something more universal, like web animations that you can apply not only to SVG, but also to, to HTML. Uh, this is something I found interesting that uh, most of the tools uh, use uh, XML attributes to, to style it. For example, fill is the color, but also you can use just CSS because SVG supports CSS. So uh, this is equivalent. You can drop the fill and put it in a CSS class. And this is a way of optimizing also SVG files that 
these automated tools they don't they don't do normally. Imagine SVG with thousands of blue cir circles. Uh, if you put in every single circle, fill, 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 so it, it gets bloated. So you just can put a class and put the styles in a way. So the same way the HTML. Another reason to use SVG is accessibility. Uh, it has a title tag and SVG support text. So that text is going to be selectable. It's, it's going to be readable by screen readers. And you can add ARIA attributes, like, you know, like HTML. In that blog post, it's really good analysis of what accessibility, how it's compared from browser to browser. So if you are interested in this topic, please read more there. For performance issues, uh, SVG is really good compared to normal uh, PNG or JPG files because it really has a small size. When Google released the, the new logo, uh, someone said, hey, let's try to make the smallest possible SVG. And only 300, almost 300 bytes, they, they squeezed. Uh, it's possible to represent the Google logo. And then SVG, as you saw, is code. It's just text, it's instructions for the browser how to draw it. So it's text, so it can be gzipped, like a HTML. So that even reduces further the, the size. So it's a win-win. OK, now I explain a bit the basics. Let's go. I will try to explain a bit the past of SVG. Mm. SVG, like any other web standard, has been involving a lot of politics. And I think that understanding the politics and the history of SVGs is going to allow you to understand better SVG and how to use it now, etc. SVG started, uh, it's a funny start. The six, the W3C, you know the standard, uh, they received six competing submissions. All of them, they wanted to do vector graphics on the web. And they say, well, we have six. Let's just create a new one from scratch, trying to take the best parts of each one. And especially heavily inspired on the Microsoft standard VML. And they try to put everything together. And one of the specification writers, he said, like, well, in that time, it was a lot of pressure from the companies, like, no, I want to include this, and I want to include it. So, uh, uh, finally, SVG is, became quite a monster. Like it's quite bloated. It has so many ch features that it's almost impossible. I I wouldn't have time to to go through everything, single thing that SVG can do. After SVG 1.0 is released, uh, let's say the SVG fall in a cryogenic tube. I mean, the SVG specification hasn't changed much, much in all this time. 99% uh, of how you write SVG is, is the same than 15 years ago. When SVG was born, browsers didn't support it. The only way that was possible to use to, to see SVG on the web is by installing a plugin by Adobe. And it was really nice because implement, I think, ni almost 90% of the standard already. And many people were excited, OK, this is going forward. SVG looks cool. Um, it's based on XML. That is, in that time, it was like super hype. XML, yes, wow. And now, not bad. And remember for a second that Internet Explorer had 90% of the browser market during those years. And Internet Explorer didn't want to implement SVG. So almost the only possible way to reach the audience, it was installing the plugin. Chrome didn't show up until 2008, almost at the end of the graphic. A bit later, the, the SVG workgroup tried to adapt to the new trends, and they released a, a SVG 1.1 that didn't introduce anything new. They just split some parts of it, and they say, OK, let's create the tiny SVG and the basic SVG, and they are for mobile phones. But of course, they were for mobile phones of that time. 
smartphones nowadays that implement the full specification. They are much more powerful. So let's say that we can forget about this, that this happened, because it's not useful anymore. All the devices are powerful enough to bring SVG. So still, from my point of view, SVG is frozen. Still, it's the same. The competing technology in the time with S, uh, compared to SVG was Flash. Adobe bought uh, Micromedia and turned their back on SVG. They stopped the support of the viewer, and they could focus on Flash. So you know, Internet Explorer didn't support SVG. So, so let's say that these are the dark ages of SVG. Other browsers were starting to implement SVG slowly, but you know, if you are a developer and you cannot, you want to use SVG, but it's not supported anywhere, why you're going to support? You know, it's like you cannot do much. Um, most of the browsers they were focused on these browser wars that are trying to compete, and they have to pick their battles. SVG always has been a second citizen on the web, so. People just uh, browsers just focus more on the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and trying to make that performant. And so SVG sadly uh, fall behind. Again, more politics. A revolution happened to HTML. Uh, the web developers and browsers they started to work on HTML5 and CSS3. And although the W3C was trying to push XHTML, you remember that time, like, you know, well formatted HTML and, and all that. But SVG was still frozen in their own bubble. SVG was still XML. <coughs> the only sign of light in that dark ages probably was the RAW file, the library that lets you to render SVG in browsers that are supported, and VML in Internet Explorer. So it was a, a way of starting to make SVG across browsers. And finally, Internet Explorer started implementing part of SVG. This is huge news. Uh, a second edition is <coughs> released, but just small erratas and clarification, no new features. And let's say that Apple has made the biggest impact on SVG in these recent years because first, it blocked Flash on iPhone and iPad, and second, they released this Retina display, and most of other manufacturers started to do Retina displays. And Android, uh, th that was a mistake from Google. Uh, they uh, intentionally left SVG out of Android 2 because they wanted to save one megabyte storage space on the device. And, and, it was, and they didn't implement it until SVG 3 and 4. So <laughs> luckily today, as, uh, Android 2 is just a tiny portion of Android market. So let's say that almost er all Android supports nowadays SVG, but in that time it was like uh, it, it slowed down the adoption of, of SVG. So okay, so we are in a time where we need graphics for uh, high density screens and that works in all modern browsers. So here is SVG. Suddenly, is this uh, SVG was born again? Now everybody finds SVG is perfect for this situation. So uh, almost every browser, so, well, SVG is not perfect still, but let's say, let's see how it's used today. Yeah. This is the today's support in the browser. Uh, if you see in Can I Use, you see that 95% of the people support, 95% of the browsers support SVG. So SVG one is like a new old thing. So you know it doesn't matter if they try to sell you as like oh this is the new shiny thing, 
Uh, no, it's old. It has quirks. It doesn't behave as expected sometimes. So I like to use this analogy. Is SVG is both markup and image. Uh, I would like that you understand that it depends how you use it. You get one feature or another. But and this probably is uh, how you want to see SVG. You can use it as an image with the tags image or like a background image in CSS. But it's a dead in the way that you cannot uh, you can access to it through scripts or is a bit it's not the full potential. And then if you want to use it the full potential, then you use it uh, with this especially object is quite popular to use it. And when HTML5 arrived, they bring SVG as like a first citizen on the, of the web. Now you can put just SVG in line on the markup, and it will work before you have to use some kind of strange tags to, uh, and now you don't even to put the XML namespace, just put it there, and it will work. So SVG is, a para, uh, I'm talking from my experience. Uh, some months ago, I started to work with SVG, and at the beginning, I thought, well, it looks like HTML. It has CSS, JavaScript, so so it, it looked really familiar. But then, little by little, it's, uh, like uh, many other people, start to discover like glitches or, like, well, this doesn't work exactly as so. It's a bit of a pain sometimes. For example, if you have two circles, one on top of each other, uh, you might think, okay, I will use the CSS set index to see which one overlaps the other one, but you cannot do that. It's not supported. The only the way that you can define the or is by the order of the tags. If the circle is declared first, then it goes behind. But they fixed this in SVG too. I will talk more about this in the later in the SVG future. Uh, so in CSS, you cannot declare every single property that you might think. You only can do colors or style properties, but not structure properties. So it's a bit, you cannot uh, declare, for example, width or height or many other parameters that you are used to do them in HTML, but SVG consider two different properties styles, like one for a structure, another for, so it's a bit limiting. Except, uh, this only happens when you actually open the SVG as a standalone uh, file on the browser. You see the G is uppercase. XML say no, uh, you have to put it on, you have to, it's low, uh, case sensitive. So like that, there is many, you know, you have to produce perfect XML. And, and that's not very, uh, you want to use SVG a bit like HTML. It doesn't matter, it's perfect. You, you don't want to break suddenly there. But this is not a problem. When you include the markup, SVG markup, you embed it on HTML. But anyway, it's, is it's worth it to check it. The same with the SSS, uh, CSS, also JavaScript has these kind of glitches. For example, I will like, okay, I want to make it a bit interactive. I add a class to SVG and then uh, changes, for example, the color, but you cannot do that. <coughs> the SVG DOM is different than HTML DOM. So jQuery is written for HTML, not for SVG, and they are not planning to support it. But in this case, they are, they are going to fix it in jQuery 3 because it's just a tiny change for them. So, but it's a pity that, that you cannot use the normal tools that you are used to in HTML, in HTML to do it in SVG. The same with commands like H, uh, append or this is not working. Uh, you will see there is three, four workarounds, but they're not pretty. This is funny. 
Well, I think I, the image explains. As you see, this in Internet Explorer, CSS transformations are not still supported on on SVG. So. So from, from my point of view, uh, every month is like a new technique of combining how you can combine SVG and HTML plus CSS. And if you add this JavaScript, and it's like SVG adds a new dimension of, of how you con can combine things. So I mean, some, sometimes we have in the front end so much possibilities of how to do things. SVG adds a new way of of doing things in every single way. So it's really, uh, and can I use? It just tells you a bit of the basic of SVG. Yeah, mm, this browser supports SVG, but, but what about this technique? What if I use uh, this CSS with this background image with this fallback? No, it's, so it's too much, I think that uh, thanks God, there is a small group of SVG ex experts that are out there trying to uh, spread best practices. They made the research, they, they have, uh, they feel bugs against browsers so they can fix all these little glitches. Uh, funny thing is that most of them are are women, and I think I find it is very interesting, like how much diversity is, is in the SVG community, and I think that's something that uh, many other communities can learn from. Also, the SVG working group—they are really nice people. They are—they uh, want to SVG to succeed, and I've actually emailed with some of them, and and they are really nice. They, they try to push SVG forward too, and, and they are listening to developers. And a special mention to Chris, that of course you know him from CSS, but he also tries to push SVG forward. He has a lot of really good articles on SVG, and he has this platform, CodePen, where you can play around with SVG, and many people has cool animations. And I think that if you see SVG like from the boring point of view, like, okay, XML, this is boring, it's difficult to learn. It has, it's overwhelming. But if you see SVG as a fun thing to do, uh, you try things, you try to do animations, you will learn it faster. This is just a couple of demonstrations of code pens where people is trying to make fun things with SVG. This is with using another library. As I said, uh, the smile was deprecated. So it was one way, performant way of doing animation as SVG, and it was already implemented in 1998. When we were downloaded websites with our 56 key modems. These guys are already implemented this. And Chrome implemented Safari, but suddenly Chrome say, hey, let's deprecate this because let's do, let's trust on web animations and let's forget about Smart. So from the point of view of SVG working group, has been a little, okay, this is a backstop, but okay, let's think about the rest. Because a smile, after all, you can only apply to SVG. But if you want to apply animations to HTML, then so they they wanted to to expand animations to every single thing HTML and CS, uh, SVG. So as I say before, uh, C, uh, Internet Explorer doesn't support CSS transformations and some things that you can animate. So most of the people say, okay, then I will use a JavaScript library. But JavaScript libraries normally are quite big because they have to support the SVG DOM and, and it's complicated. So normally they cannot uh, 
almost 100 kilobytes to the page load. So, but still it's a great way to, to learn SVG. If you need a lot of animations, it's, it's fine. So what you, people do know nowadays is use SVG for the log of the website because and forget about the, um, that it's scriptable, just use SVGs as a dead cat. So, <coughs> Uh, for icons, and uh, also it's being used a lot for charts, infographics, and a new trend called JavaScript journalism. Uh, new York Times, uh, probably you know that they have really cool animations and graphics at the same time that you read the articles. And these are three, a couple of li libraries that they led you to to make animations. As I said, jQuery is trying to support just HTML, the HTML DOM. But SnapJ uh, SVG tries to support just SVG. This is done from Dimitri. He's from Adobe. Uh, as I told you before, that Adobe turned their back to, to SVG. But after Flash being done, they have again trying to support SVG and they're trying to create tools and frameworks to, to make easy again work with SVG. It's a bit more simple way, but, but you see how easy it is. The, the top graphic is created with these instructions. It's, uh, it's one of the smaller, li smaller li libraries too that you can find. And of course, D3GS is really cool. I actually started with D3GS to learn SVG. So it's a very nice way to learn SVG, uh, playing with it. Uh, and it's the really library that you should use for if you are planning just to use, you know, that you don't have to imagine that you have to create manually all those elements. <coughs> So they have this kind of layouts for you that you just need to fill. And, and they have their own way of supporting events. Instead of jQuery, you use D3 for what happens if user clicks here, etc. Yeah, try to do that manually. <coughs> it's really cool. Drupal 8, as you know, they drop support for Internet Explorer 8, so then it means that we can use SVG in Drupal because Internet Explorer 9 already supports SVG. So that means that the Drupal front end people started to look into uh, SVG like as an option to, like, to load graphical assets. Uh, you know the toolbar that you see in the Drupal 8 is uh, is using this library of a Drupal developer. <coughs> and this lab, um, there is about 70 SVG icons from this library in Drupal 8 core. You can use them. And another place where we are using SVG is in the logo of, of in the first row you can see the SVG logo and the second row, the old Drupal 7 PNG logo. You can see how more, it's more crisp, the image in the top. Uh, I was really happy that I could contribute. This is probably my biggest contribution to Drupal to create this SVG logo. Uh, it's a bit different from the normal Drupal, Drupalicon logo because you need to put certain transparency opacity to the background because it needs to work well in every single background. You know that you can customize the, the color background in the theme. Uh, Morten and other people contribute this. Okay, let's switch to SVG, uh, the feed icon. And in the discussion, uh, okay, how we, what, what could be a good SVG standards? Or like, we cannot just accept what Adobe Illustrator outputs because it's a lot of crap. So we started to discuss about what is a good 
uh, SVG guidelines for next contributions, like everybody follows certain guidelines. Uh, still, this is a document on work, but I think it's really interesting, not only for Drupal people, but, but how a set of uh, rules of how is a good SVG from the code po point of view. And the second one is a similar project, and you can learn a lot about uh, I, didn't, I don't have time to explain every single thing here, but if you go there, you can see, okay, if you're sporting from Illustrator, you can use this tool and to, this to simplify the path so the size is smaller and, and many interesting uh, techniques. Yeah. <coughs> so Drupal 7 didn't have SVG, and now we have 79. Most of them, as I said, uh, they are from the toolbar. So when you install Drupal 8, load the front page, and you will see this. There, there are about 17 requests, and I feel that that's a bit ugly, no? Like, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, like, it's a bit like, of course, this is only for administrators, but, and the images are going to be cached by the browser. But I think we should start to, to look into including SVG as uh, a live cat, let me say. So in a way that you include only one and you can use certain techniques like SVG sprites and use the full potential of, uh, of SVG. I would like to work on that. If you want to join me during the sprints to try to make Drupal 8 uh, support better SVG, new techniques, then please join me. The guys are real life digital. They told me yesterday this really cool sandbox module that you can use nowadays for Drupal 7. It's an image formatter and provides automatically PNG fallback. So maybe you are interested to use it. Um, I would like to highlight something. Um, SVG is like a mini application, has scripts, CSS, so uh, it's safe when it's used as an image, but I wouldn't trust, uh, you shouldn't trust users to upload whatever SVG files because uh, it's like a Pandora box. If you put that SVG, they can use it in malicious ways. So uh, this presentation is really nice to see how SVG can be used in the wrong way by attackers. And nowadays, Wikipedia is one of the only few sites that let users to upload SVG files, and they pass the SVG through a um, sanitizer, uh, but still it's not 100% safe. Uh, always there is bugs and this, and you know, we are very used to sanitize HTML, but SVG is a new thing, so still, well, it's not a new thing, but, but we're not used to use it in that way. So still there is work to do there. And always that you use, you let users to upload SVG, you should be really careful. Well, SVG, uh, the SVG working group, they have realized, okay, SVG now is alive again. Uh, People is using it and we need to adapt it to the new times. Has been 15 years in the fridge, now let's get it out and let's tr try to make it easy to, to work. So at uh, the same time, as CSS has been taking ins inspiration from SVG. Uh, they have filters, uh, so they have started to work together. And they have decided to split SVG in uh, if a part of SVG can be useful for CSS, then they work together. And, you know, m most of this cool new stuff of CSS3, many of them, they, are, they came from SVG. And people think, oh, this is new thing. No, someone invented it in 1998. And so it's, it's kind of eye-opener. Op so all these uh, specifications are independent. SVG is not anymore one single thing. And SVG2 are working really actively to get this out of the door very close. And browsers are not waiting that this SVG2 is ready. They are already starting to, to implement it. So, but it's difficult to track what is implemented, what is not. 
it's a bit. So I, I would recommend you to follow best practices and, and keep reading SVG news to see what's the best standards. But definitely SVG is changing now in these three years much more than what has been in the first 10 years of the, of the markup language. Yes, so they are trying to put all together and make it easier to work. This is a document where someone said uh, they start to accept uh, SVG wish list. So people can put their, this is a bit old document and most of this is being implemented already. But it's in interesting that you can see there all these little glitches that they don't work as expected. If you are a hardcore fan of SVG, you can follow the specifications in all these places. Uh, the editor's draft, actually, they are working on GitHub, so maybe it's even easier to follow through the GitHub commits and see what is going. So as you have seen during this presentation, I'm not pretending SVG is rainbows and unicorns. Working with SVG, for me, has been both a pleasure and a pain, so I hope that you find SVG interesting and uh, SVG is, not, uh, is here to stay. Uh, let's not, I don't want that it comes another new private thing like Flash. Now we have SVG, it's open standards and it's in every browser, so let's get, uh, let's get the best part of it and let's use it. And if you find uh, ways of how to do cool things with SVG, then share the knowledge. If you find a problem, feel bugs in the browser's implementations. Uh, and here you have some resources I found useful. Dimitri is, is, is really funny guy and say, if you don't know SVG, you can call yourself a web developer, call yourself a web ent enthusiast. Um, and Sarah Swaidan publishes a lot of really good articles. She has been a reference on SVG during this last year. And a couple of days ago, she, er, uh, she earned the Net Awards Best uh, Developer of the Year. And it's, it's really inspiring the way she's passionate about SVG and share all the knowledge and helps everyone. Thank you, that's all. Please remember to vote this session. And Please, if you don't vote the sessions, then they cannot improve Drupal Core in the future. So to give a bit of feedback always helps to, to get Drupal Core better. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, please, could you go to the microphone? Here in the middle, yeah. Hi, oh, yeah. um, are there any uh, tools to help with um, automated testing of SVG? For example, if you had a, a hierarchy, a taxonomy view done in SVG where you could drag it around, can you write a BHAT test that says, uh, are my taxonomy elements in the SVG XML? Well, I haven't heard anything even remotely similar. So I think that this is a situation where you can see that SVG is, we're starting to use it like a new thing. And if there is not so much support almost anywhere. So you have to come up with how do I do this and try to share the knowledge. But I never have heard something like that. Sorry, I cannot help you there. No, yeah, it will be interesting to have it. Eh? Yeah, definitely. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Two questions. Uh, one about icon fonts and SVGs. Uh, because um, is it better to use an icon font uh, in terms of performance or F SVGs? And the second question is spriting. Is it already supported? Because 
I tried it a couple of times, but it just <laughs> yeah, didn't work. Yeah, really good questions. Yeah, both are especially pain points. Um, the, in CSS tricks, there is a really good article that is icon fonts versus SVG, and the conclusion was SVG is much better. It works better across browsers. You don't have problems of you know the fonts maybe have. The font is not loaded or, or can have suddenly a strange character instead of the actual graphic. Um, so SVG, especially nowadays, is so well supported that there's no reason to use icon fonts. It's a bit, but I understand there has been so much um, libraries of icon fonts that it's almost e easier to use icon <laughs> fonts because it's out there more maybe, but the new, uh, the best way is to use SVGs. And your second question was SVG sprites. I'm really excited about that idea because SVG lets you to to say it has like a element that is called definitions, and there you put the your SVG, but it's not dis displayed. And then in the actual outside of that definitions, then you start to say use this element that was defined. No? So then you don't have to repeat yourself. It's quite trick, quite clever trick. Um, so, uh, answering your question, um, uh, Internet Explorer—that's uh, it's so difficult <laughs> because it's one of those points where there is so many ways of doing it, and you cannot see easily anywhere. Like, okay, what browser support this technique? It's like you have to do it yourself. This. And you cannot test every single browser, except especially the mobile browsers. So, so again, I will try to find some really good article of Sara Swaidan or CSS Tricks, where they are all the time trying to find out what's the best practice. And yeah, hopefully that answer your question. Yeah. Some other question? This tiger was created, I think, in 1982. And later on was converted to SVG. Uh, it's used many times as a symbol of SVG. All right, thank you.